Andy, you know what day this is? Certainly, Amos. It's Tuesday. That's right, and Tuesday means we're on the air for Triple Action Rinso. Yes, sir. Rinso, the soap that gets clothes. Rinso White and Rinso Bright brings you the Amos and Andy Show. A full half hour of entertainment with all the Amos and Andy characters, plus Lud Gluskin and his orchestra, and those famous... Delta. Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of Amos and Andy. We all like to receive letters, and the Kingfisher's wife is no different from anyone else. The morning mail brought a letter to the Kingfisher's home. George, ain't that a wonderful letter? My sister in Philadelphia is inviting me to come over there right away and spend the entire summer with us. Yeah, the United States Mail is a great institution. They do a lot of good in this world. Just think, for three cents, something wonderful like this happens. Where can you get a bargain like that? On the mailman's second round this afternoon, he dropped another letter at the home of the kingfish. George, I just got a letter from my brother Alonzo, who lives in North Carolina. He's coming up here and wants to spend the summer here at the house. The quicker the government closes up the United States mail, the better off everybody going to be. <laughs> All the mail is used for is to defraud us innocent people with a lot of crazy relatives. Oh, what you talking about? What you talking about? You ain't never met my brother Alonzo. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I ain't never going to meet your brother Alonzo neither. He ain't coming up here and mess around with me. I don't want to meet Oh, now listen, George. Alonzo needs a vacation. His wife's going away and he's sending his two boys away to summer camp. Is that the place that they told you about that they sent them last year with a high barbed wire fence and the armed guard walking around? I wish you wouldn't be so silly. He'll be good company for you. He plays tennis, golf, handball, and I'll be away all summer. Yeah, well, why has he got to come up here and spoil it just because I got a lucky break with you going away? What's that? I mean, uh, a lucky break with you getting a vacation. All right, then. We'll just forget Alonzo. Well, thanks for them kind words. Well, I'm leaving tomorrow, and while I'm over in Philadelphia with my sister for the summer, there's a little matter of money I want to talk to you about. Well, now, I'm glad you brung that up, honey. The best way to handle it is just to send me whatever you can. That's that. Yeah. <laughs> well, in one hour from now, I'll go home and take my wife to the train. I'll be a happy man this summer. Oh, me. Come in. Uh, how you do? Something I can do for you? Oh, maybe you can help me. I'm a little balled up here on my direction. Uh, what you looking for? I'm looking for the Utopia Rest Home. Utopia Rest Home? That name is familiar? Utopia. Let me look in the telephone book here. I think it's well known. According to the letter, they got quite a few patients there, and I'm anxious to get in and start my rest. Let me see here. Uh... <laughs> Utopia. Why, oh, Utopia. <laughs> ought to be in here somewhere. Yeah, they ought to have a phone. They're certainly charging me enough to stay there. Yeah, what they charging you? Well, I'm staying there till September. I just want to be nice and quiet. And as I explained to them, I'm getting a legacy of $1,500 at the end of the summer, and they are taking half of it, $750. Utopia. <laughs> Excuse me for protruding, stranger, but you said something about having trouble with your leg, you're going to give you $1,500. What was that matter? I get $1,500 in cash, and I'm paying them half of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I know where that rest home is now. It's over here about six blocks. Uh, you can't miss the place. There's excavating on one side with a steam shovel, and on the other side of the home, they're putting up some steel construction. The Riveters is working this summer. Sure enough. Yeah, and uh, oh, as soon as you turn this next corner, you will hear where the place is. Yeah, oh, if, you, if you want to ride over there in the subway, the, the subway passes right under the home, goes through a couple of the rooms there. You, you get it. <laughs> well, that don't sound very restful, does it? It don't? Well, I, I didn't want to say nothing against the rest home because I was running the rest home myself. Uh, uh, what is your trouble? Uh, just very nervous. What's the name of your home? The Stevens Very Nervous Rest Home. Of <laughs> uh, course, uh, the trouble with my place is that it's quiet there. That's the big trouble. 
I'm Dr. Stevens, the head neurologist over there. I've been a neurologist in some of the biggest clinics in the country. I cured a lot of patients and male brothers. How about John Hopkins? Cured him, too. He was there two weeks. <laughs> Well, my name is Roger Simpkins, Doctor. I'd like to get in the rest home you run. Well, I ain't so sure I can take you. Quite a waiting list to get into Stevens' very nervous rest home. Uh, now, if you know somebody with influence, they might be able to get you in. Well, I'm a stranger in town, and the only person I know in town is you. Good enough. I'll put you at the top of the list. Uh. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll uh, take you in for the same finance arrangement you got with the other place where the noise is. Well, I certainly want it quiet, so Dr. Stevens, I believe I'll make the switch. Mm. Now, my bags are still at the depot. Yeah, well, now, I'll tell you what you do. You go get your bags, and you come back here, and I'll take you over to my rest home. Does your service include a nurse? A uh, nurse? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, here he comes now. Uh, uh, come in, Miss Brown. Uh, hi, Kingfish. Uh, Miss Simpkin, shake hands Miss Brown. How do you do, Mr. Brown? Same to you, likewise. <laughs> uh, well, now, uh, you go ahead, and I'll see you later, Miss Simpkin. Thank you, and I'll be back. Who was that? Oh, just a fella. Uh, Andy, did you ever think of doing some good in this world? Maybe looking in history and finding somebody that you would like to copy? Well, I ain't thought about nothing like that lately. Who would I copy? Uh, stand over there and let me take a look at you a minute. See who you remind me of. Mm-hmm. I got it. Florence Nightingale. <laughs> sound like a bird. <laughs> if there is such a thing as reincarnation, you as a Florence Nightingale as ever I seen one. Yeah, well, I like carnations, all right, if that's what you're talking about. No, no, and the Florence Nightingale was one of the world's greatest human aquariums. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is you getting at, King? Please, where is you anyway? Uh, as you go through life, and uh, you have got to help people. Uh, do you think you could be a male nurse? Well, the male part I'm pretty sure of. <laughs> How about the nurses? You mean like these nurses in the hospital? You mean I got to stick a hypochondriac needle in people and all that business? Oh, no, no. This is just a nerve case. Tell you what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to be fair with you. Yeah. My cards has always been on the table, but now I'm going to take them off and put the right ones on there so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, what's the matter? Sapphire is leaving in an hour to spend the summer with her sister. Now, I was going to turn our home into a rest home for that man you just need to walk out of here. Now, you are going to be the male nurse, and I is Dr. Stevens. Now, he pays us $750 at the end of the summer, and I'm going to give you half of it, $250. Well. <laughs> that sounds fair to me, all right. Maybe you was right about those carnations. I'll be a male Florence Nightingown. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, Andy, a strange thing, but uh, there's a nursing home there. Reminds me of a song that the boys sing around the lodge all their life. Yeah, what song is that? I think it's one of the best songs I ever hear them do. It goes something like, uh... Easy, go, connect to them. Dry bones, easy, go, connect to them. Dry bones, easy, go, connect to them. Dry bones, I hear the word of the Lord. Well, your toe bone connected to you. Foot bone, your foot bone connected to you. Heel bone, your heel bone connected to you. Ankle bone, your ankle bone connected to you. Leg bone, your leg bone connected to you. Knee bone, your knee bone connected to you. Thigh bone, your thigh bone connected to you. Hip bone, your hip bone connected to you. Back bone, your back bone connected to you. Shoulder bone, your shoulder bone connected to you. Neck bone, your neck bone connected to you. Head bone, now hear the word of the Lord. But them bone, them bone gone. Walk around, with them bone, them bone gone. Walk around, with them bone, them bone gone. Walk around, now hear the word of the Lord. Disconnect them bone, them dry bone, disconnect them bone, them dry bone, disconnect. Drive on the dim, 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 dim
and rinse so bright. Friends, if you want easy success on wash day, you'll take a tip from that rinse so whistle. Rinse so gets white things amazingly white and helps keep washable colors bright. I had no idea wash day soap could make such a difference. Rinse so's tops all right, ma'am. And here's why. Rinse so's triple action formula gives you a special soapy rich base, an amazing suds booster, and a marvelous grease chaser. Rinso's Soapy Rich Base makes deep driving suds that get out stubborn dirt fast. Rinso's Suds Booster means heaps of suds even in hard water. And Rinso's Grease Chaser goes after grease and grime. Helps prevent yellowing of clothes, yet is easy on hand. So ask for Rinso for a dazzling wash. A Rinso White Wash. With ease. A Rinso Bright Wash. With safety. <laughs> Now, Andy, we'll go in the shortest barber shop here and borrow a white coat for you to wear so you look like a male nurse. Yeah, well, let's go on in. Well, hi there, Shorty. How is you? Well, I'm a doggone for that. I'm surprised. I didn't expect. What's cooking? As you can't be mad. I'm a doggone. Hi, fellas. Shorty, my wife is going away, and I is turning our place into a rest home for nerves. I, I once went to a doctor about my nervous condition, and he, he told me what I needed was symphonic music. Yeah. And he, he said the music would soothe me. He, he told me to get 25 symphonic records. Oh, sure enough? Yeah, and, and about every week or two, I'd get four or five more symphonic records. I, I kept buying them until I had 350, but they didn't help me. What was the matter? No phonograph. <laughs> Charlie, uh, Charlie, look here. If you got a white coat that'll fit Andy that you let him wear, uh, he's going to be the male nurse. Oh, yeah. I got one here that you can use, Andy. Oh, that's great. I want to look like I just stepped out of an ambulance. Mm. Yeah, now, Shorty, I got a mighty nice rest home if you want to spend a week or two there yourself. Yeah, I, I went to a rest home once. I, it was on account of my speech. Yeah, what was the matter? Well, I, I could never finish what I started to. I, I would start one thing and end up with... I, I, I would begin to start off with... Uh, my, my words didn't seem to flow out like, uh, that is, you can't, when I get, you, I, 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 but I'm cured now. <laughs> Come in, Amos. Come in. Yeah, well, what are you all dressed up in the white coat for, then? Well, the Kingfisher's wife is going away, and we're going to open up a rest home. Yeah, well, that's a good idea. You two fellas ought to get a lot of use out of that. You're down all the time. No, no. Listen, I'm going to own half of the business, and the Kingfisher's going to own half. We already got our first customer that we're going to nurse back to where he wants to be. He got legacy trouble. <laughs> Sander, uh, suppose you were nursing a man and he really gets sick though and busts out with a temperature of 104 one day. What is he going to do then? Sell my half of the business to the kingfish. <laughs> well, I thought you two guys had done everything in the world, but I guess there's always something new for you to get into. Yeah. Well, well hi, kingfish. Well, gentlemen. How is everything, doctor? Uh, male nurse, I want to talk to you about a new patient. <laughs> yeah, well, on the way to the rest home, why don't you two stop by a doctor and get your head examined? So long, fella. <laughs> Now, there's an ignorant fellow. Uh, uh, look, and uh, I was going home now and take Sapphire down to the train. Now, Mr. Simpkins is the patient, you know. Yeah. He is due back here any minute, so you stall around with him for a little while while I get Sapphire out. And then you take him over to my apartment and put him to bed. Just put him to bed, huh? Yeah, now the next... Wait a minute, that must be him now. Uh, come in. Yo, yeah, come in, Mr. Simpkins. Well, Dr. Stevens, I've got my bag here and I'm all ready. Why, Mr. Simpkins, a nervous man like you carrying those heavy bags. That ain't right, is it, male nurse? No, sir. As <laughs> soon as he carries them to the rest home, he can put them down. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brown, you is going to carry his bags to the house. Did Florence Knight and Gone have to do all this stuff? <laughs> uh, Mr. Simpkins, uh, I'm going to run on ahead now to the rest home myself and... Wait a minute, I'll get back. Uh, hello? George, this is Sapphire. My clothes didn't come back from the cleaners, and I can't get them till in the morning. So I ain't leaving today. 
I'll have to leave tomorrow instead. Yeah, but listen, I was counting on you. I'm sorry, George. If you were counting on having some of the boys over tonight, you'll have to go over to Andy's place. Mm-hmm, yeah. All right, goodbye. What's the matter, Doctor? Well, it seems that there are going to be a little change in our plans. What do you mean, Doctor? Uh, well, uh, the patient that we thought was checking out of the rest home today done had a relapse, you see. I didn't know he had a patient up there, Doctor. A uh, male nurse that happens to be a patient by the name of Sapphire. Hmm. Same name as your wife. <laughs> no, no, and uh, uh, this patient was supposed to check out for Philadelphia today. Well, now, there's another coincidence. Your wife was going to Philadelphia, too. Well, I don't quite understand the problem here. Well, you see, Mr. Simpkins, the way I get it, there's two gals by the name of Sapphire, and they're both going to the same place. The only difference is that one of them is the doctor's wife, and the other one has done had a relapse. Uh, uh, listen, Mayor Norris, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that we can't take Mr. Simpkins to the regular rest home until tomorrow. Uh, until then, uh, you are going to have to take him up to our rest home annex on the corner of 138th and 7th Avenue. Oh, we got a rest home annex on that corner, huh? That's the same corner I lives on. <laughs> Well, nurse, uh, it happens to be the same place that you spent the night last night. You're a little mixed up there, doctor. I was home last night. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, anyway, Miss Simpkins, I wonder if you would uh, step down the hall there and go into the reading room there a second and rest your nerves. I know mine is getting a little frayed here myself. Uh, I want to make a few arrangements with my male nurse here. Why, certainly, Dr. Stevens. I'll wait in that room for you. Yeah, I'll see you in a minute. Now, look, Andrew, my wife ain't leaving for Philadelphia till tomorrow. So we got to take Mr. Simpkins up to your place for the night. Well, now, wait a minute, Kingfish. There's only one bed up there, and I ain't got no place to cook food for him or nothing. Oh, that's all right. You can go out and buy food for him. Well, it's going to cost money, but okay. Yeah, well, now, I done got the man out of the office so I could get it into your sick head what I'm trying to tell you. Now, do you understand everything? Yeah, all except one thing. What's that? How did that other gal by the name of Sapphire ever get in your apartment? Uh... Rinse so white and rinse so bright. Well, friends, here's a lady who comes right out and admits she's hard to convince. Says she has to see a thing to believe it. Right, Mrs. Snyder? Right, Mr. Cadell. You have to show me. And that's just what Rinso did. Rinso showed me that using the right wash day soap makes all the difference. Why, now, with Rinso in my washer, I turn out the most spanking clean, whitest, brightest wash in the neighborhood. But naturally, Mrs. Snyder, Rinso has a triple action formula contains a special soapy-rich base, an amazing suds booster, and a marvelous grease chaser. No wonder only Rinso can claim the unanimous recommendation of the makers of 33 leading washers. Rinso means dazzling results. A wash that's... Rinso white and Rinso bright. Well, Mr. Simpkins, uh, this is what we call the Stevens uh, Very Nervous uh, Rest Home Annex. You mean you use this room for a rest home? Uh, that's right. Uh, say, male nurse Brown. Uh, yeah, doctor. I see the last patient here didn't make the bed when he left. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I'll fix it up. I'll yeah. Fix. Reverse the sheets on there so the dirty side will be down next to the mattress. <laughs> Got to keep everything sanitary around here, Mr. Simpkins. I think the best side is up now, doctor. Uh... <laughs> Now, Mr. Simpkins, uh, before I leave you in care of Nurse Brown here, I'd like to give you a brief examination to see what kind of a diet to put you on. All right, Doctor, whatever you say. All right, now let me give you a little examination here. Let's see your eyelids. Mm-hmm, got two of them, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they close, all right. Uh, let me feel your pulse here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two... Oh, sort of a rumble pulse you got there, yeah. Uh, nurse, uh, I want the patient to go on a light diet. How light, doctor? Well, don't let it run over 35 cents a day. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, Mr. Simpkins, uh, Nurse Brown will be here with you on 24-hour duty. You mean that he's going to be in the same room with me all the time? Yeah, better than that, he's going to be in the same bed with you. <laughs> I never heard of that. Yeah, well, just to see if the measure, on real serious cases, I crawls in there, too, you see. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'm going to like this arrangement. Well, now, Mr. Simpkins, we feel that 
<laughs> if a man is really sick, as always, they would have a hospital staff right in bed with him. You see what I mean? Well, what is the advantage of that? Well, with Nurse Brown in bed with you, in case you want some aspirin doing the night, all you got to do is nudge him. Yeah, and I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> Uh, I want you to get undressed now and get in bed and start dressing up. Uh, I'll stop by tomorrow and we'll switch you over to the main rest home. And Nurse Brown, I want you to take... Re- hey, Nurse. Nurse. What you want? Let the patient get in bed first. <laughs> Come in, Dr. Stevens. Yeah, well, Miss Simpkins, uh, now that you have been in the main rest home for a couple of days, uh, how do you like it? Uh, much better than the annex. I had a good night's sleep last night, Doctor. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm uh, glad we moved you over here. What time is it, by the way? Just 12 o'clock noon. Well, we'll wake up the male nurse here. <laughs> uh, hey, male nurse, wake up. Hey. Uh, uh, hello. Oh, hi, Doctor. What you doing in your nightgown, Kingsley? Uh, oh, uh, I've been in surgery. <laughs> Slept in surgery last night, huh? Uh, yeah, tell me this. Uh, did uh, your patient have a good night? What patient? Is he still around? He's in bed with you. Well, oh, uh, well. Oh, good morning, Mr. Simmons. Good morning. Good morning, nurse. Uh, did the patient rest well? Well, he took a bad turn in the middle of the night. If I hadn't turned with him, I'd have fell out of bed. <laughs> You. I'm at my sister's in Philadelphia, but I got some good news for you. I'm coming home. George, is you there? Now, yeah, we're waiting to hear the good news. What is that? Uh... <laughs> I'm coming home this evening because me and my sisters have had a fight. Well, now, wait a minute, Joe. Uh, we, we, uh, 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 can't you patch it up? Uh, you were supposed to stay away three months. I'll be home this evening, George, and I'll phone you from the station. Goodbye. Goodbye, honey. <laughs> Who was that? Wrong number. <laughs> That was the talking us wrong number I don't ever hear. Uh, uh Pancho and Simpkins, uh, will you excuse me and male nurse Brown for a few minutes? We gotta go into the other room and talk about that wrong number. See? Oh yes. Well, go right ahead, Doctor. Uh, Andy, we are in trouble. Sapphire is coming home. Which sapphire is this? Your wife or that other one? Listen, numbskull, there's only one sapphire. That's my wife. Now she's coming home and the man is here in bed. Oh, well, what's we gonna do, Doctor? How about you buying my share of the rest home? Oh, yeah. See, I had the man to sign a contract with me, and I guarantee that he could stay here till September, and now my wife is coming back here. What in the world is we going to do? Oh, Wait a minute, there's the front door. I wonder who's it there. Okay. Well, LaGuardia Stone, the lawyer, come in. Now, how are you, fellas? How are you? Yeah, maybe he can help us. You know, I ain't got much time. I just dropped in to say hello, so I'm on my way to court. You know? my, my, my brother was in a traffic accident and got a broken leg. He ought to get a lot of money out of this, too, because he's doing the city of New York. Yeah, well, what happened? Well, it happened right in the middle of the afternoon, right up at the corner of 135th and Leonard. Everything was peaceful, and all of a sudden, a police patrol wagon swung around the corner going 40 miles an hour. Did the patrol wagon hit him? No, the back door flew open and he fell out. <laughs> now, now, look, LaGuardia, uh, give us some advice here. We is in a jam. Well, what is the fact? Uh, the first fact is we is running a rest home here while my wife is away for the summer. The second fact is we has got a man patient in bed in the other room. And the third fact is my wife has done decided to come home unexpectedly tonight. Hmm? That third fact certainly messed this thing up, don't it? Yeah. Well, we want the man to stay here, but how are we going to handle Sapphire? Well, boys, there's nothing like the truth. I use it every once in a while myself. It works great. <laughs> now, here. You tell her that you split the money with her, and on top of that, tell her she's doing a great thing for mankind to let the man stay here. That's exactly what I'll do. I'll sell her a bill of goods on being a human aquarium. <laughs> Well, I've got to go, see. i got to visit there. i got to stop by the court. It is probate my father's will. Oh, Jonah? Yeah, yeah. He left my brother $400 and my sister $750 and left my uncle $3,000 and cut me off with a dollar. Hmm. Didn't that make you sore? Made everybody sore. He didn't have a dime. <laughs> Well, honey, that is 
us the whole story, and you got to be reasonable about it. The minute I go out of town, well, you... Well, now, listen, honey, you done met the patient. Uh, he is a nice fella, and, and you was doing those be human aquarium. And on top of that, I tell you what I'll do. I'll go to work someplace. And another thing, whatever I get out of him, I'm going to split it with you. All right, Joe. Oh, that's a sweet wife. Now, come on in. Let's go in the next room with the patient in here. Well, Miss Simpkins, uh... Savoy here is going to be your nurse from now on instead of male nurse Brown. Oh, that'll be fine. Yeah, and I want you to promise me one thing, patient, that all during the summer you'll do everything that the nurse tells you to do. I promise, doctor. All right, then. Well, you'll excuse me. I'll see you later. Goodbye. And, patient, I want you to promise me one thing. What's that? That all during the summer you'll never let Dr. Stevens know that you is my brother Alonzo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our last broadcast this season, and we want to say goodbye. We are returning to the air again the last of September, and for this, we are very grateful to you. That's right. You folks have been mighty loyal to us, and we deeply appreciate it. And we thank you, too, for your loyalty to Rinso. We'll be back with you in the fall, and we're going to do our utmost to give you the very best show we can. Now, in the meantime, the makers of Rinso have another kind of a show for you, and it's a great show. One we know that you will enjoy. The name of it is... Call the police. And it's got everything. It's got mystery. It's got crime. A handsome detective. A beautiful girl. Mm. And love. Yes, sir, it's got love. So be sure to listen to Call the Police at this same time next Tuesday. That's right, folks. Listen to Call the Police on Tuesday evenings. And by the way, folks, the new Amos and Andy record album will be available very shortly. Maybe you might enjoy listening to it. In the meantime, we'll see you next fall. Good luck to all of you, and thank you for everything from everybody here. So long, folks. Goodbye, everybody. I never realized why Bill didn't ask me out again. Until I overheard that awful whisper. No man likes a girl with B.O. The way to stop those whispers is to take a daily bath with Life Boy. Life Boy is the only soap especially made to stop B.O. What's more, scientific tests prove that a daily bath with Life Boy helps build up increasingly better protection against B.O. Play safe. Bathe with Life Boy. You don't want people to whisper B.O. Get Life Boy. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next Tuesday at the same time when Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, will present Call the Police. This is Carlton Cadell saying good night to all of you from all of us. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.